Okay, you guys, what is up? The King of Lightning. <laughs> Finally, Berserk. Berserk, Berserk, Berserk. Berserk Chapter 328 is out. It's finally out. And apparently, and according to a uh, black man with a computer, apparently this is going to be the first of three chapters that make up this miniature arc called the Boyhood Arc. So, I mean, the thing is, Kentaro, the last chapter he produced of Berserk was in February, and like mid-February. And after that, he went on a pretty long hiatus. And that's because he had to do the movie, the golden, the, uh, you know, like the, the golden egg movies, you know? So the thing is, is that obviously he was busy doing the movies, and he can't dedicate his time doing both the manga and the movie, since both are time-consuming. So he had to do one or the other, and the movie was the obvious choice. So, you know, and the thing is, this arc, I think, is a little bit random. In fact, you know what? Yeah, I think it's very random. I think it really is very random. Because this arc would have made a lot more sense if maybe, like, Guts finally gets out of the Sea God's mouth, and then there's a miniature time skip where, like, Guts is, like, recovering from all the damage he's taken, and then during that time of recovery, maybe someone like Sir Pico asks him about his past when, like, before he joined the Band of Hawk and so on and so forth. And then this arc may have... And, and then this arc would have been... Uh, a lot more relevant, but but if you remember in the last chapter, Guts had just came out of the Sea God's mouth, and he's being carried by the mermaids. So, in my personal opinion, I think Kentaro didn't place this flashback at an appropriate time. I feel that it should have been made. I feel that Kentaro could have put this flashback in a much more appropriate time by one of the characters asking about Guts's past. That would have made a lot more sense. But that being said, this chapter, it was a solid chapter of Berserk. I mean, normally I'm fanboying up when it comes to Berserk, but this chapter, it was pretty solid. Uh, it does give us some insight about Guts and his past and how he was treated when he was a child slash a teenager. Now, this chapter starts off, and basically he's being captured. He was captured by this opposing army. Apparently, the setting here, I think the setting here is that he was captured by an opposing army and he used to work for or and he and he's still a mercenary he's still going around from battle to battle working as a hired soldier and the thing is that he lost apparently him and the other mercenaries lost and now they're being captured and taken to a castle that is under construction and on the way there he meets this individual and in and this person i think his name is uh um, uh, Martino. I think it's Martino, yeah. And basically, Martino, he's an older individual, and he's talking to Guts about, you know, how Guts is very young for a mercenary, how this life is usually there for older individuals, how, you know, and, and all, all this other stuff that's really not that important. However, there is one quote here that Martino says, which I'm going to read for you right off the page, and I think this is actually a very good quote. And it's also very symbolic. It's very symbolic of what we see take place later on in Guts' life. And basically what he, Martino says here is that <clears throat> someday, somewhere, if we follow his, rather their example, we might just find brothers in arms to give meaning to our lives. And then when he's looking up at the sky, we see darkness and then, a, and then we see a white hawk just spread out. And this is clearly symbolic of the Band of Hawk. This is Martino telling Guts that someday in the future, if you continue this road, you're going to find a group of people who you can share stories with, be companions with, and they're going to be brothers in arms. And they're going to be your family, your quote-unquote family. And this was the Band of Hawk. And we can see the hawk in the darkness. There's this white, this white glowing hawk in the darkness. So clearly symbolic of Guts' future. And I doubt that Martino is some kind of prophet, but he's just there talking about his own personal experiences, since Martino does seem to be an individual who is much older than Guts. Thus, he'd have more experience and, and much more knowledge of the world than Guts would. And Guts appears to be a teenager at, at this point in time. 
And then what happens here is that Martino gives Guts a key to his handcuffs. And then what happens here is that Guts, use, uh, Guts uses that used those keys in order to attempt to escape. He gets caught by getting shot in the back with arrows and spears, but then but then he looks and turns around, and Martino is the one who slides through and winds up bailing. So the thing is, Martino, we can assume that Martino used Guts as a decoy. And then, at this point in time, Guts has a flashback within a flashback on some Inception shit. You know, we're going, we're going in a dream, in a dream, in another dream, you know, so on some crazy shit. And basically in this flashback, we see Gambino and then we see Guts as a kid. So in the primary, in the primary flashback, Guts is a teenager. In this flashback, Guts is now a kid. And Guts is being ordered by Gambino, along with other mercenaries, to run out in the open. And when that happens, they get laid with arrows. Guts winds up being uh, shot in the arm, but he's still alive, while the other members of that platoon were all wiped out. Gambino sees where the arrows, uh, where the arrows trajectory came from, and then orders his men to go into the bushes and take out the opposing army. At this point in time, Gambino walks up, walks up to Guts and says, "You made an excellent decoy." And basically, Gambino is telling him to you basically don't listen to others. He's making your own choice. That's what Gambino is telling Guts right here. In fact, right here, the quote is, don't leave anything up to others. Men will do anything to protect their own lives and ambition. That's what it boils down to. And basically, obviously, Guts is reliving this moment in his life because, because uh, Martino just did what Gambino did a few years back. So clearly, Guts puts two and two together, and now he knows that he shouldn't let others dictate his life for him. He should lead his own path, which is what Griffith told. Well, not Gr well, Griffith didn't tell Guts, but that's what Guts overheard when Griffith was talking about friends. How Griffith spoke about how a friend is someone who is on equal level with you. He has his own unique set of dreams. He has his own unique purpose in life, his own unique goals in life. That is a true friend. And Gambino and and Martino are just reinforcing this notion. Leading your own path, following your own destiny, and so on and so forth. And then we get back to when Guts is now a teenager, and he's now imprisoned in this uh in this jail cell. And he's still handcuffed together. He's very cold. And what happens here, and wounded from the arrows and spears, and what happens here is that he is basically trying to survive now. Now we see him, and a rat passes by him. He grabs a rat, crushes it, eats the rat, drinks the rat's blood, and then he's covering up and trying to get warm. And then as his consciousness fades away, there's a flower that's in the room. And all of a sudden, next to the flower, we see this elf-like creature, or no, this fairy-like creature, and that's the end of the chapter. Now, we can assume here that Guts seeing this fairy-like creature has to deal with either his ties to the world of the dead or to the world of, or to the mystical world. Because if, because if you remember, Guts is one of those people, I've got the exact name, but he was born from the corpse of his own mother, and thus Guts is special, because he's the same way as, like, the Skull Knight. I forgot what they were called exactly. They're called, like, I forgot what they're called, but basically they're, like, souls of the dead or, or some weird notion of that. But basically, Gut, that, could do, that could deal with that, or it's just that Guts is fading, and he's fading away into the afterlife, or his spiritual body is now leaving his physical body or I'm just, or I'm just overthinking things, and he's just seeing an image of a fairy. Okay, fair enough. Okay, but that's the end of the chapter right there. Uh, again, in my opinion, it is a solid chapter, uh, and this arc is kind of random. But that being said, it was a solid chapter of Berserk. So this is the King of Lightning. Be sure to rate, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys later. Peace. Have a nice day.